Great, so thank you for the uh, opportunity to talk today. Uh, showcase a little bit about what Nanofiber Solutions is doing uh, and, and some of our key projects, and then uh, a little bit about future steps where we hope to go. So uh, a lot of people ask us what nanofibers are. And, uh, and so if you look in your body, in the muscle, in the skin, tissue, uh, everywhere your body is comprised of, of nanofibers. And, and your body, this image on the left, is a, a blood vessel. And when we strip off the living cells, what's left is this fibrous mesh. And typically, it's different types of proteins, collagen, uh, inside of your body. And what we make is uh, this image on the right which is just a, uh, a synthetic version of that. So we use off-the-shelf polymers to replicate the same type of structure that's found in the body. So this uh, gives us a lot of opportunity where we can manipulate these fibers to release drugs, uh, to release cytokines, different growth factors. We can also put uh, antibiotics, uh, all types of things into these fibers, uh, and we can make the fibers degrade or be a permanent uh, structure. So it's, it gives us a lot of tailorability there. When we look at, at different parts of the body, we can see uh, natural alignment and orientation as well. So the images here on the left, this is from white matter in the brain and uh, myocardium in the heart. So the heart, the skeletal muscle, neurons all have alignment to them. And so we can also mimic these types of structures with the fibers. So we can create these, these parallel arrays of, of nanofibers. And then when we grow cells on them, uh, in this case, these are cardiomyocytes. And you can see this alignment and orientation we can control the orientation of these cells and get them to reproduce the, uh, the same structure that they would in vivo, but we can do this uh, in vitro and plastic cell culture plates uh, and then as well as in the implants that we make. So as, as a company, we have a broad spectrum of products or areas that we work in. There's typically three areas. The first is this uh, in vitro application, so we make a variety of cell culture plates for uh, academic institutes as well as pharmaceutical companies looking at high throughput drug discovery uh, as well as stem cell differentiation assays. The second area that we work in is bioreactors. And so we manufacture uh, high density scaffolds that go into these bioreactors for production of stem cells. So companies that are producing stem cells need trillions of cells to achieve therapeutic doses. So to grow that in tea flasks or roller bottles would require uh, an extreme amount of media and, and material. So we can achieve this with basically nanofiber microcarriers inside of bioreactors instead of traditional polystyrene microbeads. And then the third area that we operate in, and, and this is where I'll focus uh, today, is tissue engineering applications. So uh, taking the same nanofiber matrices that we put into the cell culture plates for cardiomyocyte and hepatocyte and neuron data, uh, the same nanofiber scaffolds that we use for stem cell expansion. We can also shape into macroscopic shapes uh, such as blood vessels and tracheas and implant those into the body for uh, clinical indications. So that's where I'll focus on today. So just showcase a couple of um, areas that we're actively working in and, and some of the progress that we've achieved to date in those areas. Uh, and then hopefully kind of set the stage that if, if you want to have follow-on conversations, we can talk afterwards as well about more details or uh, joint collaborations. So the one area that we're working in is chronic wound uh, repair. And so these are regenerative matrices that will promote wound healing in a variety of, of different indications. So we predominantly work with partners. So all the data that I'll show is all from, from our partners and not that we're generating. So we generate the scaffolds and uh, do a product iteration with our collaborators. So in this case, we have uh, equine models that have trouble healing, and these are months that are non-healing wounds. And we can apply a, this uh, nanofiber scaffold here. In this case, it's soaked with uh, bone marrow from an isolation and apply that to the wound bed. And in a matter of four weeks, we have a fully closed wound. So this wound was uh, about five to six centimeters before application and non-responding before we did this treatment. So this is one uh, promising area that we are working in and, and using or utilizing the vets as a kind of a stepping stone through the regulatory process. Another uh, active area that we're pursuing is uh, an artificial intestine, and this is with 
Dr. Gail Besner, who is the Chief of Pediatric Surgery at Nationwide Children's Hospital. So her lab has a, a tremendous amount of experience with stem cells and growth factors and the treatment of necrotizing enterocolitis. So these premature babies are at a very high risk of developing neck uh, where their intestine kind of spontaneously degrades, uh, resulting in death. And so there's really no good option for these babies uh, except removing the intestine, and then they uh, will eventually die from short bowel, and short bowel syndrome after that. So it's a pretty bleak prognosis. Uh, and uh, an area that we are achieving some pretty remarkable steps in right now. So for this uh, application, we have a, a nanofiber scaffold with several layers, and each of these layers is performing a very specific role. So the, when we seed the stem cells onto the different types of nanofibers or the different porosities, they're aiding that differentiation process uh, inside the body. So we put the scaffold, seed it with stem cells, and it in line here with the intestine. And what we see, what we see then is uh, histologically, a, a basically a functioning intestine. So on the right, we have native intestine. And then on the left is our tissue engineered intestine. And we can see a dramatic development of the crypts and villi here inside of this intestine. So uh, to date, artificial intestine has really been uh, performed using uh, spheres, so people can regenerate spherical pieces of tissue uh, that resemble an intestine, and we're producing tubular functioning segments of intestine. So this is a, a dramatic step forward that hasn't been able to, to be achieved before, and working with a, a great partner like Nationwide Children's and, and Gail Besner, we have our clinical population already at the site uh, so that we can advance to clinical treatments in the very near future. So that, very exciting about this uh, and, and a perfect application. Also, uh, conveniently uh, at Nationwide Children's Hospital as well is uh, Dr. Chris Brewer, who uh, just moved from Yale and is now at uh, Children's. So he is the first in the world to do a tissue engineered vascular graft, and his focus has typically been on the venous side. So he'll uh, take a synthetic graft, seed it with bone marrow derived stem cells implant into the patient, and then that graft slowly degrades and is replaced with native vasculature. Uh, however, when he takes that same graft and moves to the arterial side where the blood pressures are much higher, he gets aneurysms uh, almost every time. So very reproducible results on the arterial side, very reproducibly bad in his case. So we started working with him on a uh, high tensile strength, a high burst pressure strength graft, and so far we have grafts in uh, a little over a year now that are fully patent uh, with no formation of aneurysms. And you can see here uh, a picture of our graft inside and then uh, different types of stains just indicating the types of cells that are moving into it so that we can model uh, and predict how fast our graft is breaking down and how fast the body is, is producing this neovessel. So as we monitor this uh, throughout the course of time, we do Doppler uh, ultrasound to monitor the graft patency as well as aneurysm formation. So you can see our, our lumen diameter here is staying constant throughout the time course. Uh, and we also have the in vitro degradation data to go along with this, but basically our, our tensile strength is gone out to about the 24, 22 week time point here. And so what we have essentially is a brand new blood vessel. And with his focus with pediatrics, this ability for the scaffold to degrade and be replaced by native tissue is, is critical because the, the patients are gonna grow. Uh, so not only does this open up applications of pediatrics that weren't addressable before, but it also uh, addresses concerns with adult grafts where uh, long-term stenosis is uh, always a critical issue when you implant materials such as Gore-Tex into the, the vascular system. And then uh, lastly, I'll, I'll close on uh, development of a synthetic trachea. So did the first in man transplant of a synthetic nanofiber trachea, and we've done four of these now across the world. So we have patients that are alive now that wouldn't be uh, without this type of technology. So it's very exciting for us to be able to partake and actually help people instead of just doing science to do science. So uh, the same principle where we're mimicking different body parts, and here we're taking a CT scan of the patient, and then we design a, a custom-made 
tracheal implant for that patient. So typically it's a, a tumor or a, a car accident with chronic infection, and there's uh, really no cure for that type of tracheal disease, so we have to cut out their trachea and implant our uh, synthetic trachea. So as part of that, the uh, ARDA, which is a documentary science station in Europe, created an hour-long documentary on this process, and I've got a trailer that I'll show next to uh, kind of just give a high-level overview of that process uh, and, and hopefully demonstrate that we are in the clinic, that uh, we are positively affecting patient outcomes right now, and that this isn't just a, a pipe dream, that we're actually doing what we're saying we're, we're going to do. So, Probably everybody of you have seen the, the patient. She's a wonderful girl that uh, unfortunately has had a car accident during the six months of pregnancy. For which, among other things, she has a complete transected airway. So tomorrow, we plan to do the first in human ever done laryngotracheal transplants using biotificial scaffolds. So we take these CAT scans, CT scans of the patient's neck. From the dimensions, we make this replica in plastic, the exact replica of the patient's windpipe or trachea. And the stem cells are seeded, almost rained down on top of the scaffold inside the bioreactor. And we believe that it in near future möglich sein wird, patienten maßgeschneiderte Organe zur Verfügung zu stellen. What we're doing today people never thought it was possible. What we've been able to accomplish has changed how medicine has been thought of. Tomorrow, two of the best airway surgeons in the world will operate together. If we don't achieve this, who should do it? So um, that's airing in Europe, and hopefully we'll see it here in the States and on uh, National Geographic or PBS uh, soon. I was hoping it would be here by now, but uh, political things. So hopefully it will come. Uh, so not to give away the ending of the movie, but the, the patient is alive and doing very well. So if you don't catch it, you can see the outcome. Uh, and to demonstrate what, what that technology is doing, so this is a bronchoscopy three days after implant and looking down through the trachea. So proximally, this is the native trachea, and then distally, we see our implanted trachea. And so what we can see there is that in a matter of days, three days, we have tissue infiltration already happening, angiogenesis already happening, uh, and this is, is really the, the critical aspect of our implants is that they promote infiltration uh, and angiogenesis into it. And so without that, we would have necrotic tissue, uh, and, and the implants would fail. So that's a, kind of a key hallmark that we uh, achieve. And so whether we're replacing organs uh, with artificial organs or uh, using the nanofiber scaffolds to deliver stem cells to a, a targeted area in the case of like a cardiac patch where uh, instead of injecting stem cells, you can apply stem cells uh, to a patch or a band-aid essentially and apply that to the area. So the, the applications for the nanofibers uh, are very broad reaching. Uh, delivering cells, replacing organs, uh, or augmenting repair of those different structures. Uh, and then the capabilities that we have with fiber diameters, porosity, resorbable, non-resorbable, uh, some of these applications involve seeding with stem cells. Some of them are uh, essentially implanted in as a piece of plastic with, with no cells. So uh, almost a limitless opportunity there. And so we uh, actively seek out different types of partners, uh, the clinical partners that I mentioned at Nationwide Children's Hospital. Uh, we also have a variety of projects going on from UCLA to Ohio State University to the Mayo Clinic uh, to the Karolinska Institute. So uh, a broad spectrum and then various different stages of development from small animals to large animals to human applications. So uh, I look forward to talking with you. Uh, we're actively looking for uh, seed investment, as well as other types of strategic partners that I mentioned. So thank you, and uh, I'll be here the next two days. Thanks.